This is the story of how one man overcame all the odds and triumphed in the face of adversity. He was turned on by his former friend, chased out the capital by the far right, forced to reconcile with those he despised, pushed to the limit by French invasion and lost many of his men to one of the most infamous figures in world history. But by 1924, he had overcome his many obstacles and unified a nation behind the much-renowned Weimar Republic. This is the epic rise of Frederick Ebert in the Weimar Republic. But before we dive into it, do make sure you smash the like button and subscribe. World Order takes history's greatest events and retells them as epic stories. So do make sure you hit the bell icon so that you never miss out on a single video. Without further ado, let's dive into it. It was the 11th of November 1918 and Germany had just lost the war. The Kaiser had fled and now millions of people had taken to the streets to protest the established order. Generals Hindenburg and Ludendorff were at the end of their wits when they heard about the man who could save them. Strong, bright and capable, Frederick Ebert had all the qualities an honourable worker should have. He was the leader of the Social Democrat Party and had a following of over 11 million workers on whom the country relied on. But as someone who had dedicated himself to the socialist cause, Ebert had good reason to be wary. The generals were autocrats, and he a democrat. And yet for all their notoriety, they were offering him the opportunity of a lifetime. He heeded the call and helped them in suppressing many of those who challenged the country's stability. And yet for all his formidable strength, Hindenburg and Ludendorff were never entirely convinced by the socialist commoner. His ideas about democracy threatened their autocratic rule, and they secretly began plotting his downfall. As fate would have it, something was about to happen that would give them the opportunity they needed. Let it be known to all German citizens that their country now stands on the brink of ruin. Your country has lost, your soldiers are defeated, and you, Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg, owe us a debt. can go to hell. We have to sign the treaty. We don't have a choice. And live a life of serfdom? I would rather die than sign that unordered treaty. And sacrifice those you swore to protect? I will sign the treaty. But I have your word that no German citizen will be harmed.
Eva was suddenly thrown into the hardest position of his life. In approving Versailles, he had indirectly agreed to reduce the army's strength. But the alternative was the literal destruction of their country, and Eber now hoped that the generals would show some degree of understanding. But the generals didn't. They didn't show any degree of understanding. When the generals heard about Ebert's decision, they were furious. In one of the most devious acts in German history, Hindenburg and Ludendorff let it be known that Ebert, with the help of Jews and socialists, stabbed Germany in the back. The myth sparked outrage, and on the 13th of March 1920, they gathered the Freikorps and marched on the Reich Chancellery, where Ebert was based. When Ebert saw the Putschers arriving, he was frightened. He ordered his soldiers to open fire on them, but was denied by resident commanding officer Hans von Siegt, who insisted that the Reichswehr would not fire on the Reichswehr. Stunned by the betrayal and anxious to survive, Ebert fled the building and got out of there with barely ten minutes before the Putschers arrived. His colleagues demanded he leave the city, but Ebert wasn't about to quit. He gathered his followers and ordered them to go on strike. They marched on the generals, and despite being intimidated, stood their ground. Within a few days, the strike had succeeded. The generals realized just how useless they were without the country's workforce, and abandoned the putsch. Eber returned to lead the Weimar Republic, and celebrated the fact that democracy was now here to stay. But his victory was short-lived, and the generals were now contemplating an alternative that would change their country forever. Far from becoming easier, the months following the pitch were filled with turmoil. Defeating the army had only made them angrier, and they'd already found ways of circumventing Versailles. In addition to this, Eva was now facing a monstrous opponent in France, that was demanding he pay up for all the damage Germany had done during the war. He worked round the clock to deal with the threat emanating both from beyond and from within. Back on the other side of the city, Ludendorff plotted his revenge. Ebert had beaten him because of his ability to mobilize the masses, and now he wanted to do something similar. He was told of a little known Bavarian corporal, who apparently could offer him what he was after. Back in Berlin, things were heating up. Ebert had done everything to pay France back, but it wasn't enough. They had accused him of delaying payments, and on the 11th of January 1923, invaded the country. Ebert struck back by ordering passive resistance, but it wasn't enough. The move backfired and resulted in Germany's economy spiralling out of control. Desperate to bring the country together, he turned to the middle class representative and former rival, Gustav Stresemann. Approaching him wasn't easy, but he had no choice. Every moment he delayed put the country's workers at risk. Stressman accepted the invitation, and the two of them began working on an initiative to save the country. Down in Bavaria, the workers were anxious. Their faith in Eber had plummeted since the French invasion, and they now began to discuss alternatives. News had gotten out about a young former corporal by the name of Adolf Hitler whose fanatical speeches were taking the region by storm. Ludendorff had found his man. He was someone people could get behind. When he spoke, they listened. He took him aside to share his concerns. Hitler informed him that a plan to overthrow Ebert was well underway. Like his hero Mussolini, Hitler sought to take power by storming the capital. But to do it, he needed the support of Bavaria's three most powerful men. As fate would have it, they were all meeting in Munich's Birger Baukala. Hitler informed Ludendorff that now was the time to act. If they could disrupt the meeting and convince Sizer, Lasso and Kahr to join them, then Ebert could be overthrown and Germany would be theirs. Back in Berlin, things were reaching boiling point. 
with the French now taking their resources and the German mark rising to over 4 trillion for every US dollar, the economy was collapsing. Ebert attacked Stressman for challenging his decisions. Stressman blamed Ebert for bringing the country to ruin. Ebert had had enough. He had tried to make this democratic thing work, truly. But now he just wanted all of them to shut up. To shut up and never speak again. But just as all seemed lost, there was a knock on the door. The two of them were informed that a man by the name of Adolf Hitler had stormed the Burger Brackele in Munich, taken his leaders hostage and persuaded the masses to join him in revolt. The two of them put their differences aside and decided to act. Ebert approved Bavarian resistance and Stressman proclaimed Hitler and the Nazis a threat to society. days after Hitler's defeat, the situation improved. Ebert and Stressman were able to obtain financial aid from America, and this allowed them to restart the economy and pay France back. Hitler was sent to Landsberg and was imprisoned for his actions. And after years of fighting, Ebert finally saw the benefits of operating within a democratic framework. This has been a Weimar episode from the World Order Universe. If you have enjoyed this video then do make sure you smash the like button and subscribe. World Order is constantly on the march to establish itself as an entertainment giant of the likes of a Star Wars or a Marvel. And with your support we can take one step closer to achieving our goal. Thanks again and stick around for the post credits scene which will give you a sneak peek at future content.